there's a theme in several of John Lee's Dharma talks. He says we have a choice. We can be slaves to our defilements, or we can be slaves to the Buddha. When we're slaves to our defilements, there's no chance for freedom. We may think we're doing what we want, but it's usually what our defilements want. And they don't have our well-being in mind at all. They tend to go for the quick fix, the easy pleasures, with no thought for the long term. As for being a slave to the Buddha, that's one of those situations where you can buy yourself out of slavery. In fact, everything he has you do is what gives you your freedom. You practice generosity, you practice virtue, and especially you practice meditation, developing qualities in the mind, where you take charge of your own mind for the sake of your long-term welfare and happiness. Otherwise, it's one of those cases where you really do get to practice self-determination, or in the Buddhist terms, you direct yourself rightly. You choose your direction, and whatever hardships are entailed, you're willing to take them on because you see the goal as something really worthy. And the path is a worthy path, too. The Buddha doesn't ask you to do anything that's shameful or dishonorable, unlike your defilements. They have no sense of shame at all. They get you to do all kinds of things. And then the rewards they give you are very paltry. So it's your choice. And it really is your choice. This is one of those areas where you basically define yourself in making the choice. You may have heard of William James, an American philosopher. When he was young, he had a real crisis. He wanted to be an artist. His father said no, and said no so thoroughly that there was no way that James could wiggle out of it. He got into a severe depression, and he began to wonder if he had free will, if anybody had free will. Then he came to realize. I can choose to think one thought rather than another thought. You begin to realize that free will is not something that, that's given to you. It's something you have to assert. The potential is there, but you have to assert it. His first assertion for free will is, I'm going to think the thoughts I want to think. That was how it got out of his depression. In the same way, society all around us doesn't encourage us in this direction to find real freedom. Because everybody else in society, as John Munn said, unless it's the culture of the noble ones, every culture is based on defilement, and every culture based on defilement is a culture of slavery. And it's as if the different slaves resented other people who were getting their freedom. The whole thing is designed on taking advantage of your defilements. They have their defilements, you have your defilements. And as long as you stay in there, everybody in the society seems to be okay. At least that's their attitude. But you look at yourself. Is this really what you want out of life? Birth, aging, illness, and death? was what the Buddha calls the ignoble search. You're subject to birth, aging, illness, and death, and you look for happiness of things that are subject to birth, aging, illness, and death. There's nothing of any solid value that comes from that kind of life. What defined the Buddha as a person was his decision to go for something that didn't die. Otherwise he would have been just one more prince in India who would have been totally forgotten.
and who knows if anybody else would have found the way. But the way is there. It wasn't where the Buddha expected it. But he was able to find it. He opened it up. In his image, it's as if someone had found an old road that had been overgrown because nobody had followed it for so long. So he followed his way along the road and he found the, the ruins of an old city. A city that could be made populous again. So he opened up the road. Here it is available to us. And you define yourself by your choice of whether you're going to follow it or not. It can be your first assertion of freedom. Of course, this is freedom of choice. It's not the freedom of nirvana. The question sometimes comes up. The fact that we have freedom of choice, is that our first taste of nirvana? Is it? No, it's not. The freedom of nirvana is totally unconditioned. This is a conditioned freedom. But the more you expand it, the more you make skillful choices using your freedom of choice, the more you expand it. And as you realize that you do have freedom of choice, right next to that is where you're going to find something that's of even more value and has even more freedom. It is there. As you're just getting started on the path, that's a working hypothesis. But as you follow it through, you discover, yeah, there really is something unconditioned that can be touched in the mind, right in the present moment. It's not the present moment, but it's right next to the present moment. And it's actually the ending of karma. But you do actions, in other words, you create karma to get there, the, the karma of the noble path. And every step you take on the path, it's an assertion of your freedom of choice. And it's a step of self-determination. You define yourself by the choices you make. This is how you develop a really healthy sense of self. Eventually you find you need that sense of self at the end of the path, because your sense of self is a strategy. Strategy for finding happiness. And as you walk on the, along the path, you get a better idea of what happiness is. So the strategies are going to change, so you're going to change. So we say this is a path of self determination. It has two meanings. One in the classical sense of self determination, in other words, you get to make your choices. And two, in making your choices, you determine what you are. And you can keep on improving what you are as you make better and better choices. But the choice is yours. As I said, society doesn't encourage you. You may think that living in the West we have a special burden because our, our families don't agree with the values that we're following here. Well, it's the same in Thailand and other Buddhist countries. People are okay with their children practicing the Dharma up to the extent of practicing for the sake of a better rebirth, practicing to make merit to dedicate to the parents, say, after they die, but not really practicing for the sake of freedom. If the children stop meditating, the parents start getting worried. As John Fung says, it disturbs them. They've stayed in their slavery all the time, and maybe part of them resents the, the freedom of other people who don't want to stay in slavery and who open the, the possibility that it, we could get out of our slavery. So it's up to you to decide whether you want that kind of thinking to hold you back. It's held you back for a long time.
but you have the freedom to say, I want something different, I want something better. And you can determine on that and follow through with that determination. At the very least, you will, you will have given the Buddha's challenge a try, because that's what his teachings are. They're a challenge. He's basically saying, you there in the world, you there in the prison of the world, you can get out. It's going to require effort, but you can get out. And the prison wardens may be there to try to hold you back. But unlike a regular prison break, you don't have to be sneaky. You want to make the kind of decisions, and you will be making the kind of decisions that you're happy to make in the light of day. The living a life, as the text says, is clean as a polished shell. So that's the choice that's available to you. And it's up to you to take it or not.